Here is a special technical information broadcast for members of the television and radio trade throughout the country. We include in this week's broadcast information on the introduction of RTE2 from Kipur, news on problems caused by the use of wideband amplifiers, news on work in progress at the Mulliganish transmitter on RTE's VHF FM radio project, details on trade test interruptions this week due to engineering maintenance, and a word on RTE's community radio project for 1984. Work on improving and extending the two-channel 625-line television transmission system is continuing in various parts of the country. On the radio network, a major project to improve and expand the VHF radio service throughout the country by the provision of a third VHF network is progressing. In many areas of the country, reports of interference to RTE television reception are being received from viewers utilising wideband amplifiers. These devices are being used to enhance off-air reception and to provide a number of TV outlet connections from a single TV aerial. They are also utilised to amplify both RTE and UK signals in a single device. Wideband amplifiers used for these purposes are susceptible to cross-modulation by strong local signals, such as radio telephone, illegal broadcast stations and other transmissions. This is because broadband amplifiers accept all frequencies between 40 and 900 megahertz. For this reason, they are often the cause of RF interference to TV reception and are therefore not suitable at many locations. In these cases, RTE will refer the problem back to the television dealer who installed the system. In many cases, the use of wideband amplifiers is unnecessary. For example, where VHF band 3 signals only are being amplified, a band 3 amplifier is more appropriate. In the case of amplification of UHF signals, a group amplifier is the appropriate type. In the case of new installations, dealers and installers are asked to use the appropriate group amplifier rather than the wideband type. Now some information from the regions. Eastern region. Work is progressing at Kipur in connection with the provision of the RTE2 service. This service will be transmitted on the new TV channel J using horizontal polarization. Initially, these transmissions will be on low power only, providing a limited service to parts of County Wicklow. The eventual aim is to transmit RTE2 on high power on Channel J from Kipur. It's expected that the start date for the initial low power transmission to cover parts of County Wicklow will commence early in June 1984. In the Carlingford area, engineering tests on both channels from the temporary site are continuing. These tests include RTE1 and RTE2 programme broadcasts. Transmissions can be received on channels 61 and 67 in Group CD. Aerial polarisation is vertical. At the Claremont Carn transmitter, trade test transmissions on both channels are liable to interruptions on Thursday and Friday of this week. This is due to engineering work in progress on equipment at the site. Transmissions will be restored to normal before programme broadcasts begin. Southern Region Work on the installation of the third VHF FM radio network for the South is continuing. Part of the new transmit aerial system was brought into service at Mulliganish recently. This resulted in a noticeable increase in signal level throughout the Mulliganish service area. When the full aerial system is brought into use, the final power transmitted will be approximately double the present level. By mid-1984, the network at Mulliganish will be completed, enabling transmission on full power on three separate frequencies for Radio 1, Radio 2 and Radio Nogolthukta 
throughout the full broadcasting day. At the Spur Hill installation outside Cork City, RTE1 programme transmissions on Channel 29 UHF in Group A are continuing. In addition, the RTE2 transmitter on Channel 33 is now operating on full power, resulting in a noticeable improvement in signal strength on Channel 33 throughout the Spur Hill service area. Western Region at the Mahara transmitter, the VHF FM Radio 2 service on 94.1 MHz will continue to operate on reduced power during the week. This is due to delays in delivery of essential transmitter components for equipment at Mahara. In certain areas of Limerick City and County, complaints of intermittent RF patterning interference to a TV reception on RTE1 Channel D are still being reported. RTE, together with certain radio telephone users, television set manufacturers and local dealers and renters, are investigating the problem as a matter of urgency with a view to finding a satisfactory solution. Now some information on RTE's radio service. RTE's Community Radio Waterford will be on the air until Sunday, May the 13th. The Community Radio Committee in Waterford prepares and presents the programme schedule with assistance from RTE production and technical staff. Radio Pubble Fort Lodiga is transmitted on medium wave and VHF FM on 202 metres, 1485 kilohertz medium wave, and on 96.2 MHz VHF FM. Details of the full programme schedule are published in this week's RTE Guide. After Waterford, the RTE Community Radio Team plans to visit Askeaton County Limerick, Galway City, County Gildare, Ardra County Donegal, Rossgray County Tipperary and Kingscourt in County Cavan. The next technical information broadcast on this channel will take place on Tuesday next at 11.30 a.m. Now a reminder that television and radio dealers and renters throughout the country may contact Reception Investigations, RTE, Donnybrook, Dublin 4 or on our direct telephone line 01 and that is the end of the technical information broadcast.